Hello everyone and welcome back to Byro Sports Talk. I'm here once again, your host, Byro, and let's just go right into some quick hits. Jordan Spieth won the British Open, or the Open as some would call it, and this just goes back on to I predicted he's going to be the next great golfer of the sport. This is his third major in, I think it's been four or five years as a pro slash amateur for the PGA Tour. And quite frankly, that's not bad. And he's winning early and often in his career. Hopefully he continues that trend. Uh, Jordan Spieth has also been very well. He's finished second at the PGA Championship before, and I believe that's the fourth one that's coming up soon. So look forward to him competing once again. Uh, if you notice a little tan, sunburn lines, I uh, was out and about at Cedar Point the other day, so that's the issue with this up in here. Uh, next quick hit, the MLB standings. So, in the AL East, Austin is up one game over the Yankees. Uh, that's just going to continue to happen. The Red Sox and the Yankees are just going to keep battling and battling. And it's just always it's just going to be a close race like it always is for those two teams. Uh, Tampa Bay is also t right in the mix at two games back. Uh, we'll just have to see how that finishes up. In the AL Central, we have the Indians up one and a half games on the Royals again. Another... These two teams are probably going to go back and forth, and we'll have to see what happens. The AL West, the Astros are up 17 games. I think they can probably put it on cruise control and be all right. The Nationals and the NL East are up 11 and a half games. Again, they're probably more than likely going to win that division and can put it on cruise control. The NL Central, the Brewers and the Cubs are within half a game of each other. The Brewers are up, the Cubs are down half a game. Uh, again, another the Brewers came out fast. The Cubs are trying to get back to the World Series after winning it. Uh, we'll have to see how that ends up being the case. And last but not least, the NL West, the Dodgers have a 12 and a half game lead again. Most of these double digits teams, they not necessarily can put it on cruise control, but they are more than likely going to be the division winners. Now, we're, this week there wasn't much quick hits. I am going to dig into three different topics this week again. Uh, the NBA, the NFL, and NCAA. So let's start with the NBA. So the biggest thing with the NBA was the Lakers won the Las Vegas Summer League. Uh, Kyle Kuzma won the game MVP. The Summer League MVP went to Lonzo Ball for his triple doubles and overall performance not wearing the shoes of the big brawler Grin. Uh, once again, we'll have to see how that plays out. Uh, but the big talk recently was Kyrie Irving demanding a trade from the Cavaliers. Now, for those of you that don't know the history of the NBA, Kobe Bryant once did the same thing. The Lakers told him they're not trading him. And quite frankly, he ended up being a 20-year veteran for the Lakers and won two more championships after demanding a trade. Now, some interesting spots I saw for this Kyrie situation. The Milwaukee Bucks came up, the New York Knicks, the Miami Heat, the Spurs, and of course, the Minnesota Timberwolves. Now, the Spurs were the defined, that's where he wants to go. And quite frankly, that's questionable to me because Kyrie's demanding this trade to become the man. And if he goes to the Spurs, Kawhi Leonard is the man. Now, again, the reasoning for this demand is not betrayal of LeBron. It's he just it wants to be the man like he was before LeBron came. LeBron has said he's staying out of it and that he will not waive his no trade clause if, I mean, in case the Cavs thought about it that way. 
The other situation is LeBron is upset a little bit by this. And to poke fun at LeBron, I think it's more of a you don't leave LeBron, LeBron leaves you type situation. But that's just me poking fun at LeBron. Uh, and also, out of the Cleveland Big Three, Kevin Love says, I'm happy. I'm in Cleveland. I'm happy. <laughs> Thanks for a asking. And quite frankly, that's hilarious that that's even a thing in this. So... A few other signings before we continue talking about this. Uh, Paul Gasol returns to the Spurs. Derrick Rose, I did have him written down as talking to the Cavs, but recently he signed with the Cavs. So that's official. And there's another trade, but let's get back to this Kyrie Irving situation. So Kyrie is a very good point guard. He's definitely a scoring guard at best, if you look at it that way but he can also dish it out very well. Now, some of the things Kyrie's good at may not necessarily complement LeBron, but some of the talks have been Charlotte being one, one of the teams that the Cleveland Cavaliers trade with, which that would be intriguing to see Charlotte get Kyrie and Jordan having his way with them. Uh, but in that turn, you get a Kembe Walker in return, which Kembe is going to hit the big shot like Kyrie does. But you would also get a Condavious Caldwell Pope. I think that was who was in it. But the point is, they would get more in return than what's probably realistically going to happen. Uh, another big one was the Knicks. I just... That's just they get Carmelo with LeBron, and quite frankly, that seems to be the case. Now, the rumors, other than the Kyrie trade, was that Carmelo is looking at the Thunder if the Thunder decides to part with Steve Adams or Ennis Cantor. Cantner. So you look at those two guys, and you would lose the depth of the Thunder for a trade for Carmelo, but then you get Carmelo who can shoot, Paul George, who can create shots, and Russell, who can dish it to both those guys, and they can hit the shots. And that would be an interesting combination. However, Carmelo's linked with also the Kyrie Irving trade, which, again, would bring Kyrie to New York to pair with Porzingis. But, however, they would need another team, so it would probably be Kevin Love would move to another team. However, I don't know how badly LeBron wants to blow up the Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving situation, let alone if Cleveland Dan Gilbert believes in doing as such. Sorry. Now, some other talk I have with the NBA is former NBA players. So there's two leagues going on currently. The basketball tournament, which is the TBA, or TBT uh, right now, there's four teams in the semis. They will play early August. One team is the Scarlet and Gray, which features Jared Solinger, uh, David Lighty, Aaron Kraft, William Buford, John Diebler, and Dallas Lauderdale. Now, if you are an Ohio State fan, you remember all those names. That's because they aren't that old. And quite frankly, a lot of them should be playing in the NBA still. However, they are working together in this the basketball tournament and performing very well. They're in the semifinals. Another team, the Bayheims Army, is also in the semifinals. The other two teams are the Overseas Elite and the Team Challenge ALS. Uh, didn't really see a lot of familiar names on both teams, like I did the Scarlet and Gray, of course. So there are some talented players on each, all these teams. I just from a familiarity standpoint and based on the majority Ohio viewers I have, I know those are the guys to mention. Uh, if I had to pick a team looking at the stats, I think the Scarlet and Gray have a very good chance to make it to the finals and to win it, honestly. Moving on. The other big news is the Big Three League. So, the big talk around the Tokyo Summer Olympics, yes, is 
the need for three on three basketball. Now, <laughs> sorry, I'm gonna. This is something again. I I like to look it up. I want to make sure everything is right. The Olympics 2018 is not Tokyo. I know 2020 is the Tokyo Olympics. What I'm looking up is to make sure basketball is a summer league Olympics. And I am pretty sure that is the case. Now, yes, it is summer. So now that I have confirmed it is Tokyo 2020, uh, they're bringing a three on three basketball version of for the Olympics to allow more players to become Olympians. So what Ice Cube has decided is to sponsor a league of former players and they now play three on three basketball. I believe it's, I can't remember if it's full court or half court. I haven't got to watch any of it, but I know they've, they play halves, they play ones and twos. And there's a four point or twos and threes, and then there's a four point shot. But some of the teams, so Trilogy is 5 0 currently. Uh, the Three Headed Monsters 4 and 1. The Power is 4 and 1. The Ghost Ballers are 3 and 2. And then the last four teams are all 1 and 4. And those are the Killer Threes, the Tri State Threes Company, and Ball Hogs. Now, what I really wanted to mention were some of these guys who are in the league. So, part of the Three Headed Monster is Richard Lewis, who's scoring 22 points a game, leading the league in points per game. And he's with Kwame Brown and Mahmoud Abdul Rof, I believe, is the point guard, and a few others. But again, some of these names are familiar for you 90s basketball fanatics. Uh, Mike Bibby is the leader in the league. I can't remember what team, but he's 3.8 assists per game. Now, if that seems small, well, three on three basketball is a little harder to get open, a little harder to get uh, baskets through passing. However, you would expect a lot more instead of just creating your own shot. Now, the rebounds leader, Reggie Evans, has always been a rebounder. He may not have been the biggest name for a team, but he's always been a great rebounder. And quite frankly, that's just what he's good at. He's going to rebound. He, Like I said, he averages 11 a game, 11.2, and that's what he's going to do. He's going to get you rebounds. Now, if I look at all these teams, I'm just going to say the three-headed monster just is going to be interesting. Uh, Richard Lewis, who I think retired early anyways, but he's going to shoot, he's going to drain it, and that's pretty much it. So, again, I kind of felt like I rushed through the Kyrie Irving talk. Let's re take a step back for a second and talk about it. So, again, Kyrie is just wanting to be the man. And that's a situation he's familiar with because that's what he was before LeBron got there. Now... Is it wrong for Kyrie to demand this trade away? No. Is it kind of weird? Like, I know Damian Lillard came out and said that why would you want to be traded away from a guaranteed finals appearance? And I say Damian Lillard, but it could have been CJ McCollum. All I know is a Portland's guard. And from my understanding, that's not guaranteed. And from my understanding, if he wanted to leave, that's perfectly fine. It's I can understand him being like, you know, LeBron asks a lot of me. He doesn't like to give me enough credit. Um, I find a lot of issue with this. I can't work well with him. And I can see that. Uh, again, it's a, I think it's a mentality thing. He's used to being the man before LeBron and now he's struggling to embrace the second tier guy. And quite frankly, LeBron is such a popular figure for the team that quite frankly, Kyrie might just feel disrespected in some sort of way. Now, is he gonna get the max deal coming up? I doubt it. I'm sure the Cleveland would say no. 
if he gets traded, he can't get the super max deals that we're starting to see certain players get that were on the all NBA teams. Now, where do I see Kyrie going? Personally, he still has two years on his contract. I think this is just a power move for Kyrie to see where he stands. Uh, what Cleveland is doing is just hearing offers and fielding everything. And quite frankly, I think what people need to realize is Cleveland doesn't have to trade Kyrie this year. Now, Kyrie could easily be like, you know, I'm just not going to play. I'll just hit the bench. And if he does that, which Kyrie doesn't pass off as that type of player to me, but if he does decide to do that, then he'll sit on the bench and Cleveland may have to figure out what they're going to do. However, this Derrick Rose signing gives you a new distributor who plays very similar to Kyrie, but is cheaper. And quite frankly, a guy who needs to prove that he can stay healthy. And I know the Knicks are super excited to have him. And, you know, if Carmelo does get traded to the Cavs, that it will be huge. Just that. Just the ability to already have played with Derrick Rose would help for Carmelo. Now, LeBron has played with him on the USA circuit, I believe, before. Now, LeBron also hasn't played in the most recent Olympics, but before that, he did, I believe, play with Derrick Rose. So now it's all about seeing how well these guys mesh. Now, Cleveland's been adding a lot of people, as they call it, a lot of people that used to be very good by themselves. And so have the Golden State Warriors. So have all these other teams. And that just builds a very distinguished, you have A B team and B team. The Warriors on the West, the Cavs on the East. Now, the difference between this and the 80s is there's been no one to beat the Cavs so far. As soon as the Celtics start beating the Cavs, then we'll have the 80s again, where the 76ers and the Celtics were battling to face the Lakers every year. And, of course, in the very late 80s, 89 and 90, you have the Detroit Pistons winning back to back. And of course, in the night, I guess I can continue on if you really want me to. The 90s were dominated by the Bulls, and Houston won in 94 95. But then you get to the millennium. But moving on, Kyrie needs a situation where he can be the guy. Now, why does he need this situation? He That's all he's ever known. Um, before LeBron came, he was the man. Yeah, he had Deion Waiters as his sidekick, but with LeBron coming in, then they started getting better players, of course. And, of course, Kyrie just continued to be Kyrie, and it worked. The thing I don't like about the timing of the trade demands is just quite frankly you have two years left on your contract very rarely will a team decide you know we should get rid of this guy with two years left on this contract normally they wait till about a year or less to get rid of a guy now will cleveland give Kyrie what it wants i'm going to tell you this year no i just don't see it they can easily field offers. They can easily express like, hey, this is what we want to do. But in the end, I don't think they trade Kyrie until they see what LeBron James do does after this year. Now, LeBron next year can easily bolt for Los Angeles. Cleveland's doing everything in their power to not make that happen. And that's exactly what they want. Everyone wants everyone to be where they're at currently. Now, 
for the Thunder situation, Paul George is more than likely going to bolt. Uh, it's just what's going to happen. If they excel expectations, maybe he won't. I don't know. We'll have to see. However, for Kyrie, he has to stay with the Cavs for two years. And with LeBron's future in doubt, the Cavs aren't going to jeopardize anything right there. Now, LeBron could bolt. Kevin Love would be still there and Kyrie's still there. They could still be fine. It's just... It all comes down to LeBron. If I was in charge, I would never let LeBron just do what he wants, but... It is what it is. LeBron's the best player in the world, quote-unquote. Even though Kevin Durant just destroyed him this year. <laughs> I say destroy him, but in reality, Kevin Lowe, or Kevin Durant did his job for the Warriors. He balled out. He was able to counter anything LeBron did. And that's why they were able to just excel. Oh, sorry, everyone. Now... Moving on to the NFL. Training camp is starting for everyone. I just saw today Mitchell Trubisky of the Bears is starting as the third guy after taking second team reps all through OTAs. So what does that mean? Well, that means he's behind Mike Lennon and Mark Sanchez. Currently. If he balls out I could see Sanchez getting cut, and he's the number two. Will it happen? No. I, I don't see it happening. Oh, sorry again. Now, another thing towards the Bears, Jarrell Freeman saved a man's life with the Heimlich maneuver. He, the guy was choking. He can't, went up and performed the maneuver and saved the man's life, and it was national news. Figured I'd mention it, and it's great to hear something positive from a pro athlete like saving a man's life using the Heimlich Maneuver because he's choking. I know you always hear the feel-good stories of donations, but to do a physical act of kindness of saving a man's life is great, and I'm glad you're a bear for doing it. Like, I was glad you were on the team before, now I'm even happier because you're a good person willing to do what you can to save a man's life. Now, going on, uh, Jerry Jones came out on Ezekiel Elliott and said there was no domestic violence evidence. Now, last week, if you know from watching, I mentioned a lot of information of he Zeke is going to be pressed with four games. Easy. Now, some other news I saw today is owners are pushing for Ezekiel Elliott to be fined in some way and suspended. Now, in all honesty, I think four games is e easy to say, hey, suspend four games. Appeal it, shrink it to two, you're good. Four games is not that many. Two games to... <clears throat> Excuse me, again, two games to change it. Two is reasonable, I think. I wouldn't start with two because then you're just going to cut it to one and it's pretty much pointless. Now, what I'm doing now with my head down, I'm actually tweeting, tweeting out the... I'm recording just to see if there's anyone out there, but let's move on. So, another thing that's happened, Titans, Subarshan Tratola suffered a minor gunshot wound. Now, was that big news? No. Yes and no. I mean, it was on ESPN. It was, this guy was just dumb and a bullet scraped his knee, basically. And that was the extent of it. Now... Is his future in jeopardy? No, he'll he'll play for the Titans this year. It's nothing big. Just need to get smarter. So the final topic I do have, though, that I would like to spend more time on than said shooting yourself in the leg, <laughs> is Antonio Brown wants the Steelers to extend a special piece 
or to extend special peace bell. Now, he also goes on to say he, they need bell. He also mentions that Martavius Bryant is the potential missing piece from a Super Bowl run. And I also read another article of how much is Le'Veon Le Le Bell worth? Le'Veon Bell worth. So he wants to be paid like the number one running back and the number two receiver for the Steelers. So mathematically, number one running back money right now is twenty five thousand for three years. I think is what is it's twenty five million. Sorry, for Lashawn McCoy. Now obviously Bell has the better stats, so he's going to be bump up the money a little bit. Now his receiving stats are around notorious number twos and some number threes like Ted Ginn and uh, I can't remember some of the other names, but Ginn stuck out the most to me. And he was 47th in receiving. Now, just strictly receiving stats. And that's pretty good. I mean, you look at 32 teams, 30 teams, 4, 4, 4, 4, B, 32 teams. <laughs> so you're looking at 32 teams, and he's definitely upper echelon of number two receivers with those stats strictly. Now, I mean, that's good, but the money isn't really there for number twos. So the estimation that was done that I've read about was $41 million over three years, which three to five years, I think. I can't remember what the years were. It kind of bothers me. because The reason why it bothers me is because to give you guys the most accurate stats. So let's go ahead and look into this for a second. Now, Antonio Brown was just praising and praising Le'Veon Bell, and I mean, he has every right to. Le'Veon Bell has done nothing but ball out for the Steelers. And quite frankly, I was really, really shocked to see that I was really shocked to see that the Steelers offered and he felt load balled and that he needed more money. Now, here we go. Found the article. It's on ESPN if you want to look at it. It's an article. Le'Veon Bell wants to be paid like a number one wide receiver running back and a number two wide receiver. Is he worth it? Written by Bill Barnwell. Now, let me get these stats. He is worth $41.6 million over three years. That's, that's what I thought. Now, so some of the people he was receiving strictly was around were Jeremy Curley, Anquan Bolden, and Julian Edelman for some of the stats. Uh, other players in the area was Kenny Stills, Sterling Shepard, Chris Hogan, Devontae Parker, and of course Ted, Ted Ginn Jr., as I mentioned before. Now, the 41.6 over three years now Reportedly, the Steelers offered $42 million f over three years. Now, that's more than what he's worth, according to the stats. And this is just stats made up by Bill Barnwell. And, I mean, the stats are what other receivers are getting paid in his, price, in his stat range and being the top running back, of course. So if we're looking at this, he also goes into what teams are willing to pay that. You have the 49ers, who are willing to look at running back because for some reason they don't want Carlos Hyde, which again I think is a mistake on the 49ers' behalf because Carlos Hyde balled out last year and he's going to just continue to ball out as he tries to get healthy. 
Another team they said was the Jets, which is funny because Matt Forte is on the Jets, and it's just r- weird to think that Matt Forte would leave the Jets or be the number two guy to Le'Veon Bell. Washington Redskins is another team, and they're just trying to find a consistent running back, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would love it to move on from Doug Martin. Now, the per year is, if you're looking at roughly 42 divided by 3, you're looking at roughly 15. Just to put into what he, what Bill Barnwell is writing about, 15 per year. And you look at it, and I see, I see the issues with it. People might not value Bell on the open market as fifteen million per year. Uh, there's a lot of when you're bidding that people are going to someone's going to overpay if he does hit the free market. I'm just saying, and I know what the Steelers want to do. They want Bell to feel welcome. They paid him what he's worth, according to once again what Bill Barnwell has written about. And he even goes on to say who's worth two different positions contracts. And Cam Newton comes up, uh, Rob Gronkowski, but the issue with Gronkowski is <laughs> the issue is with him is he gets hurt. And But when he does play, he plays very well. Uh, another person they like to mention is J.J. Watt because when he's healthy, he can be a pass rusher and he can be a solid... Um, outside linebacker, but the he's technically a defensive end. It's the same thing in the three four. Uh, only difference is if you're standing or on putting a hand or how we call it is putting a hand on the ground or a ground. Pl- it's tough. So there's your three point technique, which is with one hand. There's a four point technique with both hands, and of course there's a two technique where you're standing and ready to go. And Watt does it all. So, I mean, again, that was a great article to read. If you haven't read it, please go on ESPN. It was it was interesting to see that he turned down exactly how much he's worth, and he's just trying to get more money. Which, sadly, sometimes in this world, that's what people want is just more money. Um, and with that. I that was the NFL segment I do have currently. I again I'm still shocked. Le'Veon Bell is pretty much denying the Steelers to sign him. But a few other things before I move on to my last segment, which is the N the NCAA. We got. So, once again, I want to shout out to Schmoogle House Productions. Uh, I know I only have 30-some followers. It was 35 likes and 37 following. The Schmoogle, of course, has more. But, hey, if you guys want to check out something different, uh, they're writing up a Nightwing series. Uh, They had a teaser trailer. They also have a Q&A with the lead actor, and they like to update who's been hired to be a part of it. So please follow Schmoogle House Productions on Facebook and YouTube. Um, I think I also want to mention, uh, I know Atta Gaming's coming back. So for some of you, Atta Gaming was a venture I had three to five years ago. With my cousin, it is finally making its comeback. Uh, we have not posted yet, but please check out some of our earlier works. I know we had a few other people involved, but now we are strictly just going to try to keep it us two as much as we can, along with Kevin, a friend of ours, will be also a part of it. For some potential tabletop. Well, I say tabletop, but it's TCG discussion. 
And for some of you who don't know what TCG is, it's trading card games. Now, final part of discussion is is Hugh Freeze resigns at Ole Miss. What does this entail? Well, first, the interim coach is Matt Luke. He's got a lot of experience as a coordinator. He's hopefully ready for this. He's dealt with Chad Kelly and ooh, trying to picture who was before Chad Kelly. I'm drawing the blank again. However, he was also at Tennessee as a coordinator. He was also at, oh, I, just, I remember doing this research. Um, but the moral of the story, Hugh Freeze, Freeze resigns. He cites escort service calls and the athletic director said he would have been fired if he didn't resign. And so on the note of these scandals and escort services, it seems to be popping up more and more as the NCAA decides to dive on in to look into them. Uh, one such case was Louisville recently. Uh, we've seen a lot of academic fraud from North Carolina. And, I mean, even Ohio State's been hit with the jerseys and a few other issues. It's more, it was the jersey sales and the memorabilia sales that Jim Trussell just tried to hide but got caught in. Um, we're seeing a lot of this in college sports, and honestly, for college sports, it's good that they're trying to keep the student athletes athletes, but... One of the big things we got to remember is these athletes are pretty much being overused and most of the time are pretty much giving their lives away for nothing. So I would love to hear from actual college athletes, but some of the stories have been an athlete makes who makes millions for the university during his time goes into the NFL but can't see a dime because he can't play at that level. So, again, these athletes are overutilized but underpaid because they're not paid. They're getting a free education. As you can see, I've been working on the house a lot. Uh, again, guys, I'm sorry if you see a lot of that stuff. Awesome. Again, Underpaid, under overpaid, or un, overutilized, underpaid. These athletes. I know this discussion is hard for some people. One being having this discussion with my own wife, who you see the athletes get special treatment, special this, and yet they won't pay, but yet a student can't get the same issue. Now, here's the thing. If an athlete wants to be paid, they almost have to go to extraordinary lengths to get paid. Uh, apparently, you can get a bagel, but you can't have a bagel with cream cheese on it is one of the old rules. But I know the NCAA is starting to try and help these college athletes out. A little more and more every time. One of the things were, if you were a college athlete in a EA Sports game, they really, really, they lost the Ed Baron K Bannon case, Ed O'Bannon, and athletes would get a thousand dollars, I think, for the use of their rights, which is a fraction of what they were making. There's, there was rumors of a. Excuse me, a new college athletes sports game. Uh, it was college football, and it was two brothers starting it up, and they fell short of their Kickstarter goals, so that's no longer in the works. So, the just to move to the next topic potential realignment. For conferences 
This has been rumored multiple times. It's mostly deals with the expl the explosion and the death of the Big Twelve. Seeing a Texas Texas Tech and Baylor go to like the Pac twelve, seeing Oklahoma, Oklahoma State and like a Kansas or something go into the SEC. I mean TCU would be the one of the schools that would least benefit but Realignment's been forever costly. So one of the realignments I mostly hated was UMass leaving the MAC. Uh, for one, I don't know why they were in the MAC football for like a hot second. It was like a year or two. Then they tried to join the Big East before the Big East exploded. Now they're an independent. So that just brings more turmoil. Now, if I'm to look at these schools for conference realignment. What's the most obvious? Well, one, I would love to see West Virginia move to the Big Ten. Will that happen? I doubt it. And the reason why I say West Virginia is because of location. It just helps with the location. Currently, West Virginia is kind of like that random needle in the way for the Big Ten and the ACC. But... Anyways, sorry. So, more news. The conference realignment. So, other teams I would love to see move. Uh, I mean, Cincinnati and the Big 12 would be inter very interesting. Very, I think it would be a great... I think it would be great just because Cincinnati is such a big part of Ohio. You look at that area and when you look at favorite... I don't know if favoritism is the word, but favorite team. You look at most of Ohio, you see Ohio State. When you see the Cincinnati area, it's Cincinnati. I know Athens area, it's a lot of OU, but even then, it's not like, oh, yeah, OU, but we like Ohio State. That's how most Mac schools are treated anyways. So you look at Cincinnati and the Big 12. Who else would be good to help prevent the Big 12? from exploding and one of the teams that come up a lot was sorry a Memphis was one but looking at it that would be good for basketball but football is just not there so I I'm going to take a few seconds guys it's alright um, so what I'm looking up is a few Wow, uh, a big push for that. Um, let's see, Houston just makes a lot of sense. If you're the Big 12 and you want Texas to be happy, I know you wouldn't want more Texas teams in the Big 12, but it just makes sense to have all... The big, as much Texas schools as you can. Now, <clears throat> looking at who they want to bring in to the Big 12, Houston's an overwhelming favorite. BYU, Nebraska are sitting there. But otherwise, there's not a whole lot of teams. Let's see, looking, looking. I know, <clears throat> but... Everyone knows that the Big 12 is right now at 10 teams, which the Big 10 is at a lot more. <laughs> so, let's see. Nope, not going to do that. I'm trying to get some names. I know BYU was a big one because for BYU to join, it would... Bring in a perennial. You say perennial, but it's a team that in football is always good. And I guess you could say their basketball team is always decent. But I know Houston was an issue because 
more people don't want more Texas schools to take away from Texas. And Cincinnati, I still think, would have been great. It draws Ohio people to a different conference. <laughs> but I know Memphis was one of the schools looking to join. Uh, for some reason, I'm having a hard time finding some of these other teams on the list. It was like a list of six or eight. I think SMU might have been one. SMU, if you don't know, South Methodist University. Uh, always decent at football and basketball recently uh, and traditionally. Uh, the I hate to say awe and like a lot, but that's what I do. But again, SMU, traditionally, they were the team that got the first death sentence in college football for recruiting illegally, and the NCAA made an example of them. So, as we continue, sorry, uh, with the conference realignment, Another thing I would like to see happen is realignment for the, I mean, the Big East is planning to do some realignment in basketball, but to see the American just continue to struggle in the wake of the Big East becoming strictly basketball just seems to be... Just seems to be a issue. So apparently, let's look. I'm gonna click on an article. Sorry, I'm looking at articles. I'm trying to draw out to an hour. Uh, right now we're about 45 minutes in. Let's just see. So Cavs owner downplays Kyrie Irving strife. This is an article that was posted about. Nine minutes ago, so at 7.15 p.m. on ESPN by Dave McMenamin. And it's just Dan Gilbert downplaying the trade talks. I mean, so one of the big things is that, again, talking about Kyrie Irving and the trade talks, like I said earlier, I don't think Cleveland will trade him. The reason for why I don't think they'll trade him is because he has two years before his player option. And for those of you that don't know the player option, that's when the player decides if he's going to sign it or not. If there's a team option on their deal, that's when the team decides if they're going to sign it or not. And how it normally works is if it's a team option, the team signs it. If the player option is on the table. The player usually doesn't sign it. Unless it's the free agency. But that's just how it is currently. That is not what's used to be in place. Oh, sorry. So. Like, I mean, Kevin Love. It's so funny. Reading into this, everyone's like, oh, yeah, Kyrie, Kyrie, and I'm looking into this, and it's weird seeing. It's weird to see and look into this as LeBron easily just saying, yeah, he doesn't want to be here, leave. Uh, he needs Kyrie. Kyrie needs him. It's, And they both need Kevin Love, I guess. Even though Love's always the one that's put on the table, Love's just like, I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> so... Um, I would gladly, so if you do have questions, you can always send them to me. It doesn't matter what the topic is, you can ask me, go ahead and ask. Uh, again, Twitter, you can reach out to Byro Sports Talk. Facebook, you can reach out to Byro Sports Talk. YouTube, you can comment and ask questions and I'll get back to you. And let's not forget the obvious one, SoundCloud. But for now, SoundCloud is not getting the newer episodes due to a limit. Uh, once 
For those of you that don't know, I'm going to be a tech coordinator at a school. So again, once I start uh, earning paychecks through that and this house is finally done, I will officially probably up up the SoundClouds that all my episodes are on there. So let's talk about some college basketball. I know it may not have been what I said originally at the top, what all to talk about, but let's talk about it. So some of the big names right now is the Ball family, obviously. So LiAngelo is going to UCLA. LaMelo and LaVar are on the AAU circuit and apparently causing a lot of stir because one game, LaVar took his team off the court while winning because he didn't want to be cheated anymore. The other team was taking cheap shots at his players and he didn't want that to happen anymore. There's a few other things going on with them, but one of the things that always seems to be an issue with the Ball family is when things don't go their way, LeVar is going to tell you about it, and that's always an issue. <laughs> now, if we look at the Associated Press, for this, I don't know if this is this coming season. Let me just double check. So, one of the things for college basketball that has bothered me is Ohio State. And the reason why I want to talk about this is because you look at Ohio State program, they lost their head coach in June, got a new one. From Butler. Butler's now probably more than likely not going to struggle. But you look at Ohio State and what they're going to be doing this year. I think with the Wesson brothers, you're going to have a decent team. However, will they be utilized? Will they actually perform to what Ohio State should be? Now, what I mean by what Ohio State should be, it should be excellence and I say that because I come from a school that calls themselves an academy or high school so excellence is always hard to come by but you always expect the best from your players now last year Ohio State had a losing record and had a devastating record in the Big Ten that can't happen not even if it was Thad Mata it can't happen uh, I mean Thad's been Swinging at like swinging a miss so many times, striking out on these recruits. It was it was time. Now, Ohio State was able to get a transfer from one of the Butler commits. He's coming to Ohio State now. Um, personally, I'm excited to see the Wesson brothers play. I'm sure Caleb will play a lot as the six nine kid. He, I don't know if he grew to 6'10 yet, but he's a big boy. He can shoot. He can do a lot of different things. The biggest issue I see with this team is youth. They're just so young. And the issue is just they're going to get younger. But, again... Uh, I'm, I guess I'm going to end it early. I, it's, this week was just a little busy, busy week for me. I'm sorry for that. I've been trying to write down all the topics to stay on top of. Uh, I know some of you would like more baseball. Uh, I mean, let me know. I will do more baseball if that's what you want. Uh, again, I haven't heard much from anyone. But I know there's some of you who are sharing. Again, thank you. Um, 
JR and Zach and Diego. Uh, again, if you can, support Schmoogle House Productions. Uh, I, get, I, I can't say enough that they're... I'm excited to see their Nightwing project, and I hope some of you can join their movement. Uh, again, another adventure of mine, anti-gaming, achievements, trophies, totally awesome gaming. <laughs> it's coming back, it's re getting revived, or revitalized, sorry. And we're gonna have a, another partner in the mix, Kevin, if you don't know Kevin, he's on Facebook. Uh, I don't know why. Sorry, Kevin, if you are watching this. Kevin Cook. Cook's his last name. Sorry, Kevin. I couldn't remember your last name for some reason. So, anyways, so Kevin Cook's going to be the trading card game specialist for us. Uh, he will probably be on some gaming, but. So, again, please, if you have free time, check out both Schmoogle House Productions and Atta Gaming. Uh, give this a like, give this a comment, give this. I, love, I would love to hear from people. Um, um, just a hi, anything. <laughs> so, again, thank you for watching Byron Sports Talk, and I'll see you next week.